included folks like Tencent uh, and uh, Hill House, uh, Wellington Management, DST and Chinese delivery platform Mei Tuong, Biang Ping also raised their stakes in Swiggy. The founders also managed modest uh, exits but according to paper we see uh, uh, the big four investment firms earned the most. Uh, in, in fact, in the Norwest for instance earned in the range of about 400 crore rupees on an investment of 88 crore rupees. Now this is a story that of course we will be watching very closely on Startup Street and bringing you further uh, details. Now uh, let's move on to the checking in for the day. The month and cash crunch is not only a familiar millennial life story but it's also a startup's concept card. Pune based fintech startup early salary is India's one of India's largest uh, consumer lending platforms and is now working to cater to the credit needs of young professionals. Early Salary uses machine learning and social parameters to score potential customers. It has completed over 1 million transactions on its platform. My colleague Alicia Sajdev checks in with the founder Akshay Mehrotra in their Pune office to find out more. Take a look. find yourself wishing at the end of every month that your salary came in just a little bit earlier because you've run out of cash? Well, we've all been there, but now there is a startup that lets you solve that problem. We are in Early Salary's office in Pune and in conversation with Akshay, who founded Early Salary in 2015. So Akshay, you founded Early Salary when you thought that there is a big underserved market of young people, young professionals who don't really get the credit that they need at the end of the month by a traditional banking system. So how are you really solving that problem? What are the customers that you're targeting now? So it's interesting. So we're trying to solve the problem of credit to very young Indians, right? Today an average customer is 25, 26 years old. He's just started to work. There's no access to credit for him. We said, can we solve that problem? We've actually helped uh, a large number of them. We have disbursed more than 1.2 million loans in the country. We have done more than 2,200 crores of disbursal. We are doing more than 150 crores a month. We are doing. We are almost helping 80,000 people every month get an instant credit whenever they want in their bank account transferred in real time. So if you look at the problem, you know, uh, they are not able to borrow from a traditional bank. They find it slow, they find it difficult, they find it complex and banks don't want to lend for short duration. I think that's the solution that we brought on board. We said you can borrow your salary whenever you like. You can return it back literally in a day if you like. You can get it on EMI mode if you like. And we are able to service mass volume people with a small team, a focused team to make sure that we can serve faster, build machine learning so we can cater to volumes without any human intervention and really bring apart a brand promise which said money transferred in 10 minutes, really coming true. Right, Akshay, so put that uh, in perspective, uh, the customer that you're trying to serve is probably an entry-level worker, doesn't have much of a credit score to speak of, a bank wouldn't probably be very interested in serving him or her. The social scorecard that you have, you know, which assesses different parameters such as your presence on social media, the connections that you have on such platforms, all of these, uh, you know, are factored in while deciding how much you can be lent um, and uh, what is the frame of time also that you'd be provided to pay it back. Tell us how that works. So I think we evolved a lot, right? I think when we started, we were a social media only lender. You log in your social media, a lot of data got filled and we used that plus some bank statement fund writing. But over time, we have really uh, evolved. So first is we don't take, we only take metadata from social, which is connection IDs and basic profile data. All the other data is not anymore taken. We understand privacy. The other important part is how we now measure data of how you interact with us. For example, what you're typing on the app, what's your speed of typing, how fast are you looking at uploading data, what type of data circuits are you getting into, and how does data flow back to us. Against your bank statement, can we identify spends and figure out which are the spends which are good quality, whether you, are you taking insurance, are you spending on frivolous things, etc., and can we decipher against it. Right. So if, if you say it, uh, it was easy to game our system a year back, well, system has completely changed. It's changed four times. Our scorecards change every three months. They are uh, fundamentally different from the previous ones. They are far more evolved. And today, if I look at their variables, have completely changed. Right? And for a human, they are very difficult to judge those because they are so math model oriented. They are able to judge people better. You have a fairly lean team here, um, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the number of loans that you process in a day or in a month. 
So explain to us what is really the technology that you're working with and how does that differentiate you from the rest of the players in you know in this industry? We process more than 2 lakh loan applications a month. Now if I have to look at uh, that many customers, typically uh, you need a whole building like this to service that customer. But we have created a lot of machine learning models so we can process data better, we can review the customer data better, we can understand profiling better and eliminate the human interaction completely. I'll again give you a use case. Last month we did 88,000 loans. 3,200 of them in the human intervention. Everything else, the machine approved, the machine transferred money, and you actually got credit in under 10 minutes, an end-to-end -end journey from app download to money in bank, finished in 10 minutes for 85,000 people. I think that will be higher um, than most of the traditional financial institutions. Many of the banks in the country who may have four, 500 branches, will have 40,000, 30,000, 30, 40,000 employees, are not able to do this volume. We are really investing a lot on building better scorecards. So scorecard is a decisioning engine, whether you say yes or no, and how do you attract the next segment of people. So let's say you're talking about the blue collar, the grey collar, first time ever borrowers, customers who have very little data on bureau, customers who have credit cards, customers who don't have credit card, customers with multiple transactions. Now that can only be done if you can understand data and build better scorecards behind. The other important part is we don't have a single infrastructure layer today. It's completely microservices, it sits on a complete cloud system, there is no processing on uh, a plug system that means everything can be handled in a far more uh, uh, profiled manner right actually let's talk about the numbers a little bit now um, in your uh, time that you've been operating how much have you managed to raise so far and also how are you deploying the funds that the, that you raise the capital that you have so uh, we have almost raised uh, 33 million or just above 200 crores in total uh, we uh, this al this can allow us to reach to a balance sheet side of close to 800. The good part in our model is we are asset heavy. We own the NBFC licenses also, right? And that's allowing us to really grow really well. Um, so we ended the ended the calendar year at let's say 300 crores. Our objective in the next 12 months before this calendar year end is to hit 800 and we are really belting towards that. The growth plans have been clicked, uh, we have multiple products coming in, we are expanding our overall strategy, we, we have two large OEM partnerships in place. I think we are getting more confident that we can, we can achieve these numbers and yet be extremely profitable in doing that. Well, it's time to slip into a short break. But up next, India's antitrust watchdog CCI has ordered a probe into whether Amazon and Walmart's Flipkart have violated competition laws. A special discussion on that when we return. Stay tuned.